What makes me angriest about this story is the smug look on Rachel Maddow's face while she's reporting on it. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie. What's up, dude? Anyhow, I'm in the basement tonight because my wife is away, I've got the kids, and I've plopped them in front of Ace Ventura so I can get this vlog done. Because this vlog needs to get done. Alrighty then. I got a few DMs from some subs asking me what I thought of the Rudy Giuliani deposition. This story, I hadn't even heard about it until I got the emails. I went to Google it, and lo and behold, Rudy Giuliani submitted to a deposition in the Coomer defamation lawsuit. And the deposition wasn't a disaster, it just really was not very good. Now, for those of you who have been living under a total rock with no internet connection and no neighbors to relay the news to you, back in the 2020 election, there was a big story floating around being pushed by Giuliani, Sidney Powell, and others relating to election integrity. I can't say the F word, but it relates to the F word as relates to election integrity. Some people were floating around some very serious theories, making some very bold accusations, and people were saying at the time, these accusations have to be true because if the accusations are false, surely these companies, these individuals will be suing for defamation. Well, lo and behold, the companies and the individuals are now suing for defamation. More specifically, one Eric Coomer, who is the Director of Product Strategy and Security at Dominion, is suing Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump, and a slew of other defendants for defamation for statements they made about him in the context of the 2020 elections. Now, a while back, I did a vlog breaking down that lawsuit. I did that vlog in a bathroom of a cottage. Don't judge me. I had to get the vlog out and this is what I had to say at the time. All right, I have uh, been told not to vlog tonight, but I have snuck into the bathroom to do this. Okay, I'm vlogging tonight because who knows what tomorrow brings. I have read the Eric Coomer lawsuit against Sidney Powell, Giuliani, OANN, Newsmax, and others. The lawsuit highlights a principle that Abraham Lincoln once wrote about way back in the day, don't allege that which you need not allege, lest you be required to prove that which you cannot prove. When you allege something, you better make sure you have the evidence to prove it. And when you allege certain damning things, you better make sure you have the evidence to prove those things. The more damning they are, the harder the evidence has to be. Well, wouldn't you know it? Those words were true at the time. They are true now. And I think Rudy Giuliani is now truly understanding the importance of those words. Eric Coomer is suing Sidney Powell, Lynn Wood, Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and a bunch of other defendants for things they said about Eric Coomer at the time to the effect that he had had secret meetings with Antifa, that he had guaranteed the outcome of the election. They made a bunch of very serious accusations for which Eric Coomer did undoubtedly suffer some very serious consequences given how heated that election cycle was. He alleges that he was receiving death threats. He had to leave his job. He had to go on leave because it wasn't safe for him to be at the job. He was doxxed, his family was doxxed, his father even got harassing emails. Suffice to say, you knew that as a result of some of the statements made that Eric Coomer was in fact going to sue for defamation, he did in fact sue for defamation, Giuliani sat down for a deposition, and that deposition is just going to give fodder to the likes of Rachel Maddow, and it did, and look at her face as she reports on this story. We reported earlier this week um, on a deposition um, conducted under oath and transcribed uh, a deposition of Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani, in which Mr. Giuliani admits under oath that when he started spreading these conspiracy theories about voting machines somehow being used to steal the election for Joe Biden, he actually had no idea whether the things he was saying were true or not. Question from the lawyer. As I'm hearing your testimony, in terms of eyes on information about your claims about Dominion voting systems, we've got some media reports that you generally described, and then you looked at some Facebook postings that you described. Answer for Mr. Giuliani. I don't remember if it was Facebook. Those social media posts get all one to me. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Question. Social media postings. Answer. Giuliani. I, I think it was Facebook. Question. Anything else that you laid eyes on? Answer. Right now, I, I can't recall anything else that I laid eyes on. I maybe looked at Facebook when I was coming up with that stuff. I don't remember. Which is Facebook? Is that the one with the little bird... 
Now, having become increasingly cynical because I have become increasingly aware of the world around me, whenever I hear the mainstream media run a story, my initial reflex is to think that it is 100% false, that it is 180 degrees in the wrong direction. So I went and read the Giuliani deposition just to make sure that Maddow's reporting was accurate. And listening to her report on Giuliani, she might as well have been talking about herself because everything she is saying in this piece is 100% true of her own reporting on the Russia collusion conspiracy theory. But lo and behold, confession through projection is oftentimes true. Unfortunately, this time they do get a story right from time to time. We didn't look into it. We just said it. No, we had no idea if it was true or not. Who cares? That's not my job. Reading through Giuliani's deposition, it's not like he makes any monumental admissions to the effect that he knew what he was saying was a lie, that he deliberately went out of his way to try to distract from the outcome of the election, that he deliberately sought to destroy Eric Coomer's life. He doesn't make any of those massive admissions. He just basically says, yeah, I was reporting a bunch of stuff that I did not independently verify myself. I had no real good reason to believe it was true. I just heard some stories and then ran with them. Now, first things first, looking at the deposition itself physically, you will notice that it is four by four pages per page. So although it looks to be only 60 or 70 pages long, that is in fact four times longer than it appears to be. It is close to 200 some odd pages, this deposition. The pages do read quickly and there is a lot of useless back and forth and dialogue between non-witness and non-attorneys. But the bottom line, Giuliani admits that they were moving very quickly in this file. They had a big team working on it. They were overloaded working on many lawsuits at the same time. He didn't personally verify any of the information himself. He he just saw some stories on Facebook or social media. He doesn't know where. He heard the stories and he repeated that information. Primetime news. And just as a pure matter of fact, it turns out that a lot of the things Giuliani said were in fact just factually incorrect. They were factually incorrect statements made about Eric Coomer, who was not a public figure at the time, who probably does not need to prove actual malice in any event. But if you don't trust Rachel Maddow and you don't trust me, let's just read from the deposition itself. Question. You say that we, meaning the team, became aware of media reports. Mr. Giuliani, which media reports are you talking about? Answer. They would be online. Online publications that someone else on the team would bring to me and show me and say, this is probably the first time I heard Mr. Coomer's name, that this gentleman named Eric Coomer is, it says in this article that he had a relationship with Antifa and according to the report he had overheard and at this point it may have been hazier than it eventually became that he had said something about ensuring that Trump would be, assuring these people that Trump would be defeated before it was a statement made before the election according to the way it was related to me. What bothers me about this is that I am inclined to like Giuliani. I think he's done some great work in the past. I think he's a very smart person. I just don't know what happened in the context of this election. And going back to what I said when I initially broke down this lawsuit, if you are going to make very serious accusations, you would better have some serious evidence to substantiate those accusations. And this answer here is by no means serious evidence to substantiate those accusations. And the reality is, in as much as I want Rachel Maddow's reporting here to be totally inaccurate fake news, it really doesn't get much better anywhere in that deposition. Question. So can you think of, Mr. Giuliani, as you sit here, what media reports you remember seeing, either an article or a media, any kind of statement? I can remember seeing what I would call online media, meaning meaning not the Washington Post or the New York Times or the New York Post or NBC, CBS, more like not necessarily them, but more like the Daily Caller or that category, Breitbart. So it was brought to my attention that there was a media report, maybe two, that there was a guy who worked for Dominion that was, had a history of being very anti-Trump and that in a conversation that was overheard with Antifa members, he made this statement before the election that the election was fixed and I said, have we run it down? And the answer was no, but I'll get back to you. Later on, question, what did he get back to you with? Answer, I can't tell you the timing for sure, how fast it was or whatever. Answer, I can't tell you the timing for sure, how fast it was or whatever. This was not by any means the focus what I was doing at the time. I was focusing really on the Philadelphia case and on the Michigan case because I was writing, working with Phil Hearn on the draft of that case. So this was like an interruption to what I was doing just so you appreciate that it wasn't main point of what I was doing. And it doesn't get any better anywhere in the deposition. It's basically Giuliani saying, this is what I was told. I heard from people who read social media posts. I didn't do any independent verification myself. I didn't do any investigation myself. I was distracted with other lawsuits. And while I can be very sympathetic to lawyers who are overworked, who are taking on multiple files at the same time, especially in this context, it doesn't necessarily justify not vetting the information that you are putting out there to the world. I totally appreciate that Giuliani was in fact totally focused on the Philadelphia and Michigan lawsuits, but that does not necessarily justify making statements, very big statements that you have not personally verified yourself. 
And the fact that he later admits in the deposition of having to separate himself from Sidney Powell, separate Sidney Powell from Trump campaign lawsuits, it really, really does not look good for what was being done in the context of these lawsuits. It does not look good for the public statements that Giuliani was making in terms of the verifications of the factual bases of those statements. Bottom line, it looks like Giuliani is, in fact, in big, big trouble in the context of this lawsuit. But if you have been around my channel for long enough, this is not something that is going to be new to any of you. We have been saying this from the very beginning. We have been saying that a lot of people are making a lot of unsubstantiated claims that are going to get them into a lot of trouble, and here we are. And at the end of the day, what irritates me the most about all of this is that Rachel Maddow now gets to point her smug finger at Giuliani and accuse him of doing exactly what she did herself, but alas, her past sins are not relevant right now. All that is relevant is Giuliani's alleged present sins. So that is the breakdown of the lawsuit as it stands, the deposition, and unfortunately no, Rachel Maddow was not misrepresenting the contents of that deposition in at least as much as I believe so as well. It just drives me crazy that she now gets to report this and she must feel so darn satisfied. All right, and with that said, I can hear that they are now at the portion of Ace Ventura when he is going around checking the rings to see which one is missing the stone. So I'm gonna go up there and catch the last half of the movie with them. If you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. If you want to support the channel, all of the support links are in the pinned comment. We've got some great merch. Robert Barnes and I do weekly streams every Sunday. We do weekly streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. If you want to find us and support us on Locals, where supporters get lots of good extra content, you can find us at... Oh, uh, man, one of these days I'll get this right. There we go. Feet up. Viva Barnes Law at locals.com. All of my content is also on Rumble, so you can watch it there. But more important than anything, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well, and now you know your vlog. Peace out. Booyah! Oh, gosh. <laughs>